while I absolutely love to craft apparel for winter running. Their shoes have always been a bit too firm for me. But now, Kraft has started using supercritical foams for some of their shoes. This is a Nordlight Ultra, and it's time to take it for a run. What's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I want to talk to you guys about the Kraft Nordlight Ultra. But before I do, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Kraft sent me for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Nordlight Ultra. First, let's get into some specs. The big story for me on this shoe is that they're using a brand new kind of foam that as far as I know, Kraft has not used in a shoe before. This is a super critical EVA foam, which is a special kind of process as I made some of my favorite shoes that I've run in in the past couple of years. Kraft itself says it's ultra light with ultra high rebound, and that it also uses a non-toxic process with no chemicals added to the raw materials. And what they've done here is they've given you a bunch of that super critical CR foam. Now we got 40 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a six millimeter drop meaning 34 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And now it's not just a plain slab of midsole foam. There is a little bit of contour cut out into the bottom of the midsole, and that's going to help provide a little bit of room for the foam to travel and to compress underneath your foot as it's hitting the ground. Now, moving to the outsole, we have a rubber outsole that has beefier lugs than you see in most road running shoes. And that's because for a lot of craft shoes, they're intended to be run not only on the road, but a little bit on the trail as well. They kind of call a lot of their shoes gravel bikes in terms of being able to do a little bit of road, a little bit of off-road, but overall intended for a lot of fun endurance activity. Now, in the insole of the shoe, we have an ortho light liner that Kraft says is also ultra rebound for maximum energy return against the foot. It is really nice and thick and very soft and very pleasant to step on. On the upper there, you're going with a mono mesh that is very light, very breathable, and has almost no structure to it at all. Overall, this thing is just very floppy, and it's also very roomy. I did go true to size on this with my normal running shoe size nine, and I felt like those are right fit, but there was plenty of room in here, which is a lot more generous than a lot of other shoes that are in this category, and they're just in the running space in general. The tongue has almost no padding at all, kind of my favorite kind of tongue, and there's very minimal padding in through the heel cup and in this Achilles flare. Altogether, depending on whether you see it as a road shoe or a trail shoe, might be light, might be heavy. It's 10.2 ounces or 290 grams, which puts it a little bit heavy on the roadside, but pretty much right in the space that I like it for my trail shoes. Now that we've gone over the specs, let's go over what it's been like to run in the shoe. Whenever I see nitro foams on a spec sheet, I'm always pretty excited. And it can usually mean one of two things. I feel like you can either have a fuel cell type of foam, if you're familiar with the New Balance shoes, that's super squishy and has a lot of compression in it. Or you can have something that's a little bit firmer and higher rebound, and it's a little bit more bouncy, kind of pingy, and really needs a little bit more force to be put into it so that you can get a lot more back out of it. And that's kind of what I'm seeing on this shoe. It's not a super squishy shoe, although that step in comfort is really nice. It's a shoe that I definitely could see myself wearing all day long. If you've run any of the Nitro shoes from Puma or the DNA Flash shoes from Brooks, you kind of get an idea of what this super critical foam is going to feel like. Now, as far as using this as a hybrid shoe, I found it to be pretty good on trails and pretty good on roads, but I found like it's best on soft surfaces that were kind of road-like. So like very well-groomed paths, crushed limestone, grassy surfaces. That's where I felt like the shoe was most at home. And I also felt like 
this is the surface that it was designed for, that little bit of extra give that the surface provides compared to say blacktop or concrete worked really nicely with the slight squishiness of the foam and that high rebound kept things really nice and snappy. As far as trails that were a little bit more technical or a little bit more sloppy, I felt like that's where kind of like the gravel bike style limitations of this shoe started to appear just a little bit. For trails that are gonna be a little bit more challenging, I think that I'd be reaching for something with a little bit more substance to it. The upper that I really enjoy feels a little bit disconnected when the foot is reaching some extremes in terms of the type of terrain or the angles in which the foot is starting to hit. But when you are on some more stable and predictable surfaces, that lightness of the upper is really nice and makes for some really great summer running. Now I did get to pick up the pace just a little bit in this shoe and like most nitro foam shoes it was really fun to run some strides in it and I also took it for a fart lick workout and I felt like the shoe was a really good workout shoe but for paces that were like more extended and faster than a couple of minutes at a time at threshold like let's say you wanted to do a 5k pace workout or some vo2 max work I'm not sure that I would really reach for the Nordlight Ultra because I think that's where some of the weight and heft of this shoe comes into play. All right, let's get to some summary points, some comparisons, and some other shoes that I can trace this shoe against. I think that the Nordlight Ultra is best used as a daily trainer for people who prefer to run on a variety of surfaces. It's really nice for moderate workouts and easy running, and I could definitely see taking this out as a road ultra racing shoe. Now let's talk about some pairing options for the shoe. Let's say you're looking at this and wanting to start to build a rotation around it. I think one shoe that makes sense right out of the box is another shoe in the craft family and that's going to be the CTM Ultra Carbon 2. Now this is kind of like basically a racing version of the Norlite Ultra. At least that's how it feels in my mind because this shoe is also described as kind of a gravel bike type of shoe but everything on is just a little bit more aggressive. The foam is not a super critical foam so it's going to be a little bit more firm but it also has a very aggressive rocker up front that's going to help you roll through that foot strike really quickly and get that turnover the lugs on the outsole are a little bit more aggressive but still in that kind of like not quite road not quite trail shoe kind of category and this is one that i think you could use the nordlight ultra for daily training and workouts and race in the ctm ultra carbon if you're running your races on some of those mixed surfaces now in terms of a pure road racing shoe though I think that the Norlite Ultra would pair really well with the Ultra Vanish Carbon. Both of these shoes have very generous toe boxes and they both have super critical foams. The Ultra Vanish Carbon also has a carbon fiber plate. It kind of has a teardrop design, so it's not a full length carbon fiber plate, but this is a very speedy shoe with a very airy upper. And I feel like there's a lot of similarities in the fit between these two shoes. And I feel like this is gonna be a really nice snappier option when you need to really push the paces as fast as possible on those road surfaces. Now, let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe. The Nordlight Ultra, at least in the US, comes out later this month, and it's gonna retail at $160. Now, if you've been watching this channel all year, you know that I've not been a huge fan of that $160 price point. Seems like every other shoe is coming in at $160 for 2023, but let's see what you're gonna get across the market for other shoes that I think might be comparable in this category. The first shoe that comes to mind when I'm looking at the Nordlight Ultra in terms of its competitors is going to be the Puma Forever Run Nitro. Now this is another tall stack height shoe with a nitro base foam. This also has an extra soft insert that you kind of see through some of these holes in the midsole here. So it's a little bit softer of a shoe and a lot more relaxed of a shoe, but I feel like in terms of some of the things that they're trying to accomplish for the roads, I feel like these two shoes are very comparable. And the Forever Run Nitro is coming in at 150 $50. Now, another shoe that I think I can compare it to on the roads is going to be another nitro foam based shoe, and that's going to be the Hyperion Max. Now, these two shoes have a similar type of foam and also a similar type of feel. This outsole on the Hyperion Max is also a little bit thicker than I typically see in the Hyperion series of shoes, so it can go on some of the softer surfaces, although it's not quite as capable there as the Nord Light Ultra is. So, you're trading a little bit of road speed for that all-terrain versatility in the Nordlight Ultra. And the Hyperion Max comes in at 170 bucks, so that seems to be where the market is, so at least it's competitively 
priced. So those are my thoughts on the Nordlight Ultra. Let me know in the comments if you have a question about this shoe or any of the other shoes that I talked about in today's video. Or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to see you guys there in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?